Okay. The wildest thing that has ever happened in my agency was we have this crazy customer who's about 75 years old. He comes in here about once every three or four weeks and he pulls the front bumper off of his car. He lives in an apartment in a senior citizen center a couple miles from here and he pulls up on the curb. And when he backs up, the bumper come, pulls off <laughs> and he doesn't have anybody else to fix it. So he comes here to our office and asks me to put his bumper back on about every three weeks. <laughs> so, that's, and he, and he had, a, I thought it was just the car because he had a car that got stolen about two months ago and um, he got a replacement car for it already. And he's brought that in twice now to have the bumper fixed on that one. So, <laughs> wow. That, that is crazy. But anyway, my name is Jay Franklin with the Franklin Insurance Group. We're located in San Antonio, Texas, and I am an insurance dude. Insurance dudes are on a mission to escape being handcuffed by our agencies. How? By uncovering the secrets to creating a predictable, consistent, and profitable agency sales machine. I am Craig Kretzinger. I am Jason Feldman. We are agents. We are insurance dudes. Right now, while it's fresh in your mind, check out live.teledudes.com. We took our notes from over 100 interviews with top agents from around the country and made it into a live webcast. Using these strategies led Craig and I to selling more than $10 million in premium in the last two years. On this call, you'll receive the exact blueprint to get the same results. Just go to live.teledudes.com. Dot com to register for this upcoming Tuesday's live call with us. If you jump on this call with us, we're certain 2022 will be an absolutely fantastic year for you. See you there. Woo! Boom! Go Spurs. Woo! Boom! <laughs> yeah, I forgot that part. Boom! <laughs> Boom! <laughs> that is incredible. How many times has that guy asked you to fix his bumper? Probably eight or ten. <laughs> <laughs> and he's um, he's crazy. He just... He's an old guy. His wife, he had a second wife and she left him a couple months ago or a year ago. And he moved down here from a little farther up north in Texas to be close to his son. And he's just really weird. He says he invented the Red Solo Cup. He's from Chicago. <laughs> and, um, so he, uh, he comes in and last time he was here, he sat in here for like a couple hours and I had to keep him at the other side of the office because he didn't smell very good, but he needed his car quick. <laughs> So I fixed his car and he sat here and told me how he was looking for a, a wife, a new wife, and asked if I could help him. I wonder how well, the like, tender seed is. Shelf today, but how's the tender seed for 75 year olds? I don't, probably for him, not very good, unless he's right. got some money. And I, I don't know if he does or not. He says he does, but. Well, he invented the solo cup. He invented the solo cup. Yeah. He worked not to for make that company and said he was the one that came up with the red solo cup. So who knows? <laughs> Not to be completely unempathetic, but um, I wonder if his <laughs> wife left him because he kept asking her to fix the bumper. That could be. <laughs> no, I, I can't imagine anybody living with him for too long. In fact, we take some flyers around to some of the apartments in the area. And he's had a 55 and plus. It's not a assisted living, but it's a 55 and plus apartment community. It's really expensive to live there. It's really nice. But um, I went in there one time a couple weeks ago to hand out, give them some brochures and take them some cookies. And um, they, uh, I told them, I said, now I'm bringing you these cookies because I don't want the guy whose car keeps getting stolen to come back. So you keep them here, please. And they just laughed. They knew exactly who I was talking about. They probably have a thousand residents there and they know exactly who that guy is. <laughs> That's his thing. Like in order to have uh, some connection tie with people, he has to fix his bumper. His, he might. Yeah. Yeah. So he left that car. The reason they took it, and it was a crummy car. It was like a little, I don't know, like a Hyundai Accent that was like 10 years old or something. And he's in a place that's 2500 to 3000 a month. So the cars that are there are the people are in Lexuses and Mercedes and <laughs> all kinds of really nice vehicles and they stole his car, but he leaves it, even his new car that he got, that's really nice. He leaves it there with the windows open. He leaves the windows open so that he can get in if he locks the keys in or something. <laughs> I don't even know. It rains in his car. He's got a, he's got like a, a Genesis 
or something now that's like a really, really nice car. And um, he's still leaving the windows open in that and pulling the bumper <laughs> off. Wow. That is unreal. Dude. The more we unpack that story, the better it gets. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. He's he's interesting. but <laughs> That is funny. Well, yeah. Jay, you've been around, uh, gosh, we, we've all known you for years now, and um, I, I, I actually don't know, maybe Craig does, but I don't know how you got into the insurance business. Let us share with us. All right. Well, it was kind of in, uh, like a lot of people, I just kind of fell into it. So <laughs> I'm older. I've only been in this business for three years, so I've known you guys, you know, the whole time. been friends the whole for time. three years on Facebook. And, um, I was, I sold building materials all my life. I'm from Michigan originally. And I lived in Indianapolis for quite a long time. Then I lived in Florida and I worked for Palo window corporation. I've sold building materials most of my life. And I worked for the window manufacturer, the second largest manufacturer in the country as a regional manager. And they transferred me from Indy to Florida and then Florida to here. And I just got tired of traveling and everything else. So I kind of looking for something else outside of the building materials. And I had looked at real estate before, and it just was too long of a runway to make any money. I've got four kids and dogs, and they all like food and a place to live. So I needed the money. <laughs> and I looked at insurance when I was actually in Indiana. I'd looked at, I'd talked to somebody from another insurance agency, and um, it didn't really go through, fall, come through. And still, it seemed like, too much time to make any money. So I got a call from a sales leader in the area where I met and she asked me to come in and talk to her about an opportunity, which I did. And there was a good opportunity. It seemed like to start to make money pretty quickly in this business and with this company. So I took the plunge and got my insurance license and I did more studying than I've ever done in my whole life. I think I I did go to college for a couple of years. I think I graduated early in drinking. So <laughs> I, uh, so I got did out I. there and did something that, you know, something I could find that was didn't need a college degree. And, and I knew people in the building and material industry. So I got a job working at a retail store and then went into outside sales and then got into management at Pella. But um, yeah, I just uh, nice. kind of, started doing this. I went and I studied more to get the test, to get past the test for the life and the PNC. I think I spent more time studying than I did in my whole, <laughs> whole every <laughs> oh. career from kindergarten <laughs> up through my <laughs> college. I don't think I studied as much as I did for the, those tests. Well, we're always learning. So look, you right. learned how to, you learned how to learn. Yeah. You do. And I'm still learning. I mean, it's been yeah. about three years now and I'm still, I, we still have a lot to learn. There's something new every day. And, and as you know, the carrier that we're with, everything now is chat. So you can't just pick up the phone and call somebody and chat. You don't get your point across quite as well. So I've had to learn to be, to find, find answers and figure out how things work. Yeah. The crazy thing. And the one thing that I did that was probably a, a mistake when I, we opened up, I started scratch in 2019 and I had four LSPs or salespeople that worked with me and not one of them had any insurance experience. Uh-huh. So we, one person had sold life insurance for a, a little while, but it was kind of a side gig for him and the other people had no insurance experience. So we came in here not knowing anything. And <laughs> when somebody's feeling down or needs a laugh, I threatened to play recordings from our first. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. We were bad. I mean, we were really yeah. bad. We had a we had a slow start, but we picked it up pretty quick. And now, I've got. I'm down to one person. I'm had to let somebody go a couple months ago, but got somebody. A couple of new people starting the first of next month. So, well, cool, Jay. Now. What? Why do you take us back to your earliest wed, something that was kind of the fuel for your fire? It really got you passionate about this. About the insurance business? Yeah. Well, I, I really like helping people and I like, I like to be able to help them through difficult times or get, you know, find 
the right fit for them. Um, so I really, I really enjoy like the guy that comes in and I joke about him to fix his car, but I like it when people come in and they need us for something like that, or they have an, they've had an accident and they don't know what to do. They don't know who to call. I've got a lady right now that she's in her early seventies and she's never had an accident before. And she had an accident a couple of weeks ago and she doesn't know what to do. She doesn't know who to call. She doesn't know what questions to ask. She's just has she's tons of questions and concerns. So helping people like that, I really enjoy doing. Plus I enjoy, I've been around for a long time. I enjoy the people that work, have worked for me and worked for me um, and seeing them grow and seeing them develop. The one person that's still here, uh, she was 20 years old when I hired her. She had no real work experience at all, other than she had gone out and got her license on her own. I thought, well, that's pretty cool to just go get licensed and not even know if you're going to like it or want to do it. And she's she's turned into an awesome insurance salesperson. She had been my number one salesperson. Another person that was here left and opened up a, an office for another captive company. Um, so I like to see that, to be able to help people and, and see them grow. Yeah, that if you have to lose somebody to something else right. in the insurance business, that's the way to lose it. Because man, th- I mean, that's a testament to your to you and your agency and and what you've you've been a huge example to them of what they want to be like, right? Because right. because if, if they didn't, they wouldn't they wouldn't up open their own agency. Right. Yeah. So he was here for about a year and a half, and um, the idea was he had looked at opening an agency before I did, and just didn't know if it was for him. He's the one that had some life insurance experience, but, and he had a little bit of money, uh, but didn't really know if that was for him or not. And he came in and helped and was kind of our leader for a while, but he did really well. And we're still friends with him. We just referred somebody to him today that we weren't able to write. So we still have a good oh, relationship cool. with him. He sends some people to us that they have trouble with and it works really well. But I love the fact that we can, that I can help people and, you know, help them create a career. You know, the couple couple yeah. of people who have been here, they this was their first real job or, yeah, a couple of them, it was their first real job. And um, they've done really well since being here. So, so I think what are, one of the things that comes up a lot, obviously, is the challenge of having employees, right? Managing yep. people. And it sounds like a lot of the people that you've brought on, especially from the beginning, stuck it out for a, a long time, yep. which is not the norm in this business. So right. you've been able to create this great culture mm-hmm. um, in your business. How have you done that? What are what are some of the things you did to really make it where people wanted to stay? Well, I, so I give them the opportunity to make a good living so they can make a lot of money if they can sell a lot and they can make, they can make a little if they don't sell a lot. But um, <laughs> we have just made it a fun, a fun atmosphere where everybody everybody knows everybody's on kind of the same compensation plan. So we're able to have contests and just really make it a fun workplace. All love coming in here every day. We've all become friends. We go to each other's houses on different holidays or go out to eat. Uh, Even the couple people that have left, we mostly stay in touch with each other. And it's just been a really good, a good culture. And I found people that work really well together. One of the things that I didn't do, and I heard this on a recent podcast of yours with uh, somebody talking about employees, is I was, I've been way too slow on getting rid of people. I had somebody that I would have fired probably 50 times. And he just (laughs) felt bad for me as a younger guy. This was his first real job. He's super, super smart, but he just was such a pain in the butt. And then he was, he missed a lot of work. He was late. I think in two years that he worked here, I think he was on time once, but he would stay till 11 o'clock at night. He'd come in an hour late, but he'd be here till 11 o'clock at night. And every time that he wouldn't show up, if he was, if something happened, he was usually sick. He had some issues, some physical issues issues. So he was sick a lot, but he would be gone for a few days and then think, I just can't deal with that anymore. I'm just going to have to let him go. He'd come in, I'd plan on talking to him as soon as he comes in, but I'd have a meeting or I'd have a customer in here. I'd be on the phone, whatever it is. And he'd come in and in the hour he was here, he'd write somebody, a couple of cars, a home and a pup. And I'm like, geez, he's every time he talked to somebody, he'd sell them. 
and he was really good. So I just kept him here thinking, well, we'll just work it out. I'll just talk to him. I'll tell him we need to, he needs to be here. And he put in more hours than everybody else. We just couldn't count on him. And so I wasn't quick enough to let him go. So yeah, dude, I'm so bad at that. Right? I'm really bad at firing. And I know this to be true. I know that if somebody isn't working out well in the agency, it's actually better for them. Like if I was more empathetic to them and less cared more about the way it makes me feel, right? <laughs> then I would get rid of them because right. they because they would be closer to doing the thing that they they want to do. They want to do. They're meant to do, and all that other stuff. And I know that. Yep. But man, it's like, it doesn't feel that way in the moment, right? Right. Well, it's a lot of work to hire somebody new to bring them in and teach yeah. them what your process is and everything else. It's just, a, it's a lot of work. And so to keep them here, a lot of times it's easier if you're a procrastinator like me, you just, they're there. It's, some, it's a body that's there and you just live with it and it creates a bad culture in the office now, everybody did get along and they all everybody's liked each other but it still was bad and then you get rid of somebody like that and or they go and then all of a sudden and i've seen i've had this in other my other jobs too everybody's like oh my gosh i can't believe you kept him around here so long and i thought well i'm doing everybody a favor by keeping him here but it really creates you know kind of a poisonous atmosphere in the office cuz somebody's not there you know, the other people are, are feeling, well, why am I here when the other guy doesn't need to be here? So, yeah. So it's, I've learned a lot doing this. I've never really been a great process driven person. I know the processes are important, uh, but I kind of hate doing them. But that was the one thing besides the employees that we really, I didn't know. And if I would have had a little bit better processes from the start, I think we would have taken off a little bit faster. I just learned, kind of learned on the fly and we did things, you know, when they come up, we'd say, okay, well, we need to do this now or we need to do that. And we just didn't have really good processes in place and just flew by the seat of our pants for probably the first three or four months, which hurt us. Yeah. So to so talk about recruiting, um, how are you finding people? How are you recruiting them right now? So right now we've just been doing it through word of mouth, through networking. I'm in a few different networking groups. And so I've, the two people that I'm hiring right now, uh, one of them is in the, the networking group and he sold life insurance for years and he's a, a really, really good salesman. He needs to get his PNC license. He's supposed to do that next week. But um, I know him. The other one was through um, one of the people in my networking group. He had worked with this lady who was, she sells health insurance and life insurance right now, but she's really awesome. And so met her through him. But I met a lot of people through just networking and getting the word out there, finding people out in the street that are working like a bartender or something that is working a, a job and really good with people and really aggressive and not afraid to talk to people. That's what I'm looking for. And I tend to do better when there are people that we come across kind of organically. And I, I like that. We had, we were at a restaurant, we were having it's networking lunch at a restaurant here in town. And we would go there every week we're there. We would have to tell the waiter to take our orders. He would just stand in the background quietly. And I look at that and think, you know, that is not the kind of person that we want. So when I'm out there looking around and seeing people that really are excelling at their job, their people, 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 I talk to them and have them come in and we talk. And there's I've got several people that are kind of, we're in contact with that maybe someday we'll turn into an employee here. We'll see. But I just out there just meeting people, just like selling insurance. It's meeting right. people and finding ones that you click with that you like. I don't want to work with somebody that I don't like. And so, you know, there's just there are people that that we like that like us that have a similar type of personality and just want to sell and want to make money. Yeah, they got to fit in. Right. Right. Uh, what, so speaking of fitting in, what, what type of things do you do to keep your team motivated? So we do a lot of little promotions every month and we haven't for the last couple of months. And I, now that I've last few months, I've been down to one person. We're just doing what we can to get by pretty much. But 
We have a little wheel to spin when they sell a bundle policy, they spin a wheel and they can win a prize that's on there. We have a little gong that whenever we sell a policy, we hit the gong. We just try to have fun and try to make sure everybody knows where we're at. We use agency Zoom for them to be able to see where they're at, where our agency's at. Everybody just is kind of competitive and we just try to have fun at doing this. And I involve them in some of the networking activities that we do. And the lady that's here with me, she has a three-year-old. She's had some, we all had COVID last fall and um, she had COVID and her family had COVID and she had nowhere to take her son. The daycare wouldn't take him when he had COVID or when other people in their family had COVID. So she was able to bring him here to work and we turn the TV on. He watches cartoons and and we work away. So just try to make it a good family atmosphere and try to take care of everybody. And I don't over, I'm not a micromanager by any stretch. So, you know, they, as long as they're making the calls, they know what they need to do every day. And we're just, um, just taking, hopefully every day we're taking names and numbers and, and making some sales. Cool. Hey, what are you still doing here? Well, while you're still here and while it's fresh in your mind, check out live.teledudes.com. Yeah, if you weren't listening before, we took notes from over 100 interviews with top agents from around the country and made it into a live webcast. Using these strategies did help Craig and I write over 10 million in premium in the last couple of years. And let me tell you, on this call, you'll receive the exact blueprint to get the very same results. Again, that's live.teledudes.com to register for this upcoming Tuesday's live call with us. And if you jump on with us, we are certain 2022 will be an absolutely fantastic year for you. See you there.